All right. Uh, welcome back to the channel, guys. This is Jeremy here with Consciousness Awake. And today I want to do a really, really special video uh, discussion, kind of like an interview uh, slash uh, uh, discussion uh, with uh, somebody uh, who has their, uh, who has another YouTube channel. Uh, this gentleman's name is uh, Tony Sayers. Uh, and uh, I will make sure to uh, have his link uh, for his uh, channel uh, down below for you guys so that you can click on that and, uh, you know, and, and check Tony out. I, I wouldn't be surprised if a few of you guys so far who are uh, in the Consciousness Awake community already have, uh, you know, watched uh, Tony Sayers videos and kind of know who he is. Uh, he's becoming very popular uh, at the moment. Um, and um, but uh, but he but he was uh, kind enough and gracious enough to make the time uh, to uh, come on here for for a kind of a little short uh, short podcast. I think we're going to go maybe thirty or thirty minutes or so. Uh, we're doing a Zoom, uh, and uh, apparently uh, Tony just updated me that Zoom has some new uh, regulations on how long you can do a Zoom meetings. So uh, I just found out. Uh, so uh, apparently we can just go about forty minutes or so. So so we're going to stick to about thirty minutes plus. And uh, in this video, guys, uh, you know, like uh, Tony in his last upload, uh, I haven't watched it yet, but he's talking about uh, the reincarnation traps, the soul traps, all of the things going on in, uh, in the astral dimension. Uh, and, um, and uh, I, you know, I've been talking about this stuff too. I've, I have uh, many different videos over the last year talking about soul traps and the reincarnation traps and how to how you want to you know keep your consciousness for yourself. You don't want to give your energy and your consciousness to some other beings or entities. And and um, and we just keep uh, a lot of people in this reality construct keep getting led to believe that uh, it's okay uh, to you know give up the sovereignty of your of your soul and consciousness to other beings. And, uh, and that's not the true way to ascend and evolve yourself. And so we're going to um, just have a nice, uh, you know, uh, discussion about some of these things. And uh, Tony, I'd like to give you the opportunity here to say hi to everybody and introduce yourself too. Yeah. Hi, Jeremy. Yeah. Th thanks for, thanks for having me on the channel and uh, you know, putting out the work that you put out and, you know, I know how time consuming it is putting out content. <laughs> We're up uh, quite late doing this interview, so it's a pleasure yeah. to be here. And um, yeah, you're absolutely right when you're talking about the uh, the level of manipulation and deception that's going on. Um, a lot of people uh, in the alternative uh, media are, are very focused on the 3D level of this matrix, of course. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, how corrupt politicians are, what's going on with all that kind of stuff. and you know, how certain psyops have been played to the public and to, to gain control and, and, uh, and to seek to take more of our freedom and, and, and actually to, to cull a lot of the humans here. But um, a, a lot of people are not really going to where the root cause of the problem is, which is where I guess I like to go with my work. And, and that is in the metaphysical realm, um, the astral realm, fourth dimension, wherever you want to, whatever you want to refer to it as, where this this whole agenda is, is really coming from. And you mentioned there about um, one of the biggest deceptions and probably the most important one that we need to go, that we need to be aware of. And that is of that, that, that there is this like soul mill, soul trap matrix running, this program running where they have found a way to trap souls and tricked us in this matrix, it's telling you in the word, um, to really come back down round and round and round again. This is why I don't like the infinity sign. Um, so we're being tricked and uh, they've sold us this idea of reincarnation being a, a good thing in certain religions like Buddhism and you know all of this stuff. But really it's just another deception. So yeah, based, based on my research uh, down the years, um, what really resonates as to what ha what is actually happening now is that when uh, when people die or they pass over, because most people don't seek information and knowledge in their living lives, um, ignorance doesn't die when we die. 
So you don't just die and become all knowing. You you still got that level of ignorance that you you didn't use your life properly. So correct. Um, so what happens is that what the, when when you die, you get shown this light tunnel. I call it the false white light tunnel, which I believe is is being projected from the moon. And there's a lot of uh, propaganda about the, the white light tunnel. There's actually a Disney movie called Soul, which was uh, not, not long ago released, which talks about going to the light. There's a, another Netflix uh, series, I forget what it's called, but it was all about near-death experiences. So they're pushing this one hard. And there is a reason for that because people are starting to wake up to it slowly, like everything else. So we're shown this false white light tunnel, which I say, I, I think it's being projected from the moon. And at this false light tunnel, we are met with uh, false white light beings. Now, these are beings that in our physical lives, we might have had some af affinity to. So some people are, are into angels, some people are into Jesus, Buddha, maybe a religious or god. Or just uh, what's huge is emotional connections with certain people. Yeah, or even even like a deceased loved one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, like, if you were particularly close to your granddad, you know, he might show up. Um, and it, these are these are literally just entities there to entice you into the false white light tunnel, upon which most humans go with it because a they're in shock that they've just died, and b like I say, they haven't sought to find anything out in their physical life. So. Then, then we're taken for this life review where we're shown our life and they might say, look, Jeremy, you're a great person, but in 2008, you hurt this person. And in 2012, you hurt this person. So you, you can either like suffer the consequences, the karmic consequences and go to hell and suffer and whatever, or what we can do for you is arrange for you to go back down and resolve your karma. Um, and so, like I say, the human being ignorant, most people believe in heaven and hell. Yeah. They're obviously going to take that option. I've heard that the soul, once you, the soul rests for a, a few, for a while before it comes back down because it takes so much energy, just having a, an experience on, on earth. But eventually the soul gets recycled back down. The memory gets wiped. This is why we can't always remember our lifetimes. Um, and then we're back down again for another round on Planet Crazy, being used as <laughs> having our energy siphon, yeah, having yeah. teeth drainers. But, you know, our energy, yes, we're just feeding yeah. our energy into the machine. Yeah, we're feeding the machine. The machine. We're, 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 we're a human cattle farm. Um, and so many of us have... Uh, I believe we've had thousands of, of, of lifetimes here and we, we, we tend to remember like clips of it. Sometimes you'll get like an insight or if you go into regression, you can sometimes, uh, you can actually remote view uh, previous, uh, previous lifetimes. Um, if you just set the intention to view it, you view through your soul. Um, and so this is what's been going on. We, we've been round and round and round this, this merry-go-round and I don't like to use the word trapped because I don't think we are trapped forever. Um, I like to, for every problem, there is a solution. And I think just being aware that this has been going on and, you know, discerning at that point of death can help protect us. Now people say, well, what do you do? Where do you go then? And I can't tell people where to go. Um, I'm only, I only explain what I personally are gonna, am going to do. And what I personally am going to do is, intention is very strong yes we only realized how we how strong our intention was we'd be very careful with it yeah yes exactly but that's that's what i talk about in my videos where people have to realize that consciousness within itself is is very powerful even here in this reality you know yes. in this human body yes but once your consciousness is it even is even a, a fraction or 50 percent or majority uh, in these other realms, and you're consciously aware and focused, you know, at that moment, uh, yeah. like an astral projection, if you're astral yeah. projecting into the etheric plane, yeah. uh, into the astral planes, the several planes, yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah, you, uh, 
you have to be very mindful of your thoughts and, and intentions because yes. intentions and thoughts uh, manifest um, uh, many times faster yes. um, in, uh, than, in frequency than, uh, than the way they vibrate here uh, yes. in this physical reality, which is a slower, denser vibration. So, so, uh, so it's, really, it's really interesting how um, consciousness, you can be in an out-of-body experience and you can literally be in any different astral construct, uh, astral uh, in within the planes. There's different astral reality constructs. Mm -hmm. Some are really great, very heavenly. Some are some are uh, similar to Earth. Some are very hellish, you know, mm -hmm. hell-like, you know, realities. Mm -hmm. And you just like you were saying earlier in this video, talking about you know you just don't want to be ignorant to some of these things. You want to be aware of what's going on. Yeah. Uh, you know, inter uh, interdimensionally, uh, extra yeah. dimensionally, because um, because when you are even in an astral projection and you're just popping into a hellish reality, you in that moment can say, nope, I'm going to shift out of this reality into a different astral reality construct that's more heavenly. Yeah. And so knowledge is power. You know, so, some, yeah. some, of, some of the things I talk about on my channel and my videos not all the videos, but on some of them. Uh, yeah. Seriously, um, I am pretty sure that I'm ticking off somebody. You know, I'm getting yeah, somebody yeah, 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 yeah. a little, sure. little agitated, a little annoyed. But you know, it's okay though because I know how powerful I am, and I know how um, no, um, how no entity or being um, can do anything to me. Yeah, at all. absolutely. At yeah. all, but it's just the mentality, you know, and that mentality should always carry over after physical death. But, but yeah. you know, one of the reasons why I do my channel too is to just uh, communicate and express these certain types of ideas to people because uh, I'm hoping that their consciousness, A, will try to have out of body experiences, astral projection, so they can kind of start uh, seeing how these other uh, realms function, operate, and how consciousness within itself operates. See, yeah. that way, when the physical body dies that one day, because we all have physical death, yeah. um, we can be a lot more uh, prepared. Yeah. So absolutely. you're talking about false light beings, um, you know, all these types of things, uh, beings and stuff that are trying to uh, either corral corral your energy and consciousness into some other reality construct or mm -hmm. be as you mentioned uh recycle you back through the you know loop to come back into this particular one you know yeah. over again yeah. because because all of us uh, all of the people right now that are walking around uh in this uh on in earth on earth um, we are all here from uh, for different reasons, different missions from different places. Some are reincarnating over and over again. Some are walk-ins. Mm -hmm. uh, some, uh, you know, there's all these different things going on. It's very complicated, actually. The uh, the actual larger reality picture re reality system is a little more complex and complicated than what your typical religious uh, organization yeah. will portray it to be. You know. Yeah. And of course, that's a whole other topic, you know, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the absolutely. religious organizations. Yeah, yeah. And so, so uh, some good points there, absolutely. Uh, but just going back to uh, what, what I would personally do, because um, obviously that's a natural progression. That's what, well, where yeah. do we go? Yeah. What do we do? So uh, as you were rightly saying, how, how um, strong an intention is in that dimension, it's instant, as you mentioned. Yeah. Um, and so um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to set the intention to leave this matrix forever and your consciousness should take you to, uh, so I've heard different things that you can either, there's holes in the fabric of the matrix you can escape out of, or you can just rip a hole in the fabric of the matrix because we are that powerful really. Yeah, um, it's, uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because um, yeah, that's a good that's a good thing to point out. It's like, okay, so what do you actually do? What do you so you die, you that day comes and you're you experience physical death. You either know you're gonna die a few days ahead of time or you're gonna get run over by a truck or something, you know, mm -hmm. one of one of those things, right? And you pop out, you pop out of your physical form into your etheric energy body, and you're in a real time zone where 
you are in an overlay dimension uh, of this physical dimension. And you can see and hear, you know, as people describe sometimes in their in their own exp experiences or NDEs where they can hear and see uh, paramedics, you know, or nurses or hospice or whoever it is at working on their body or some they, they get to observe that through the, the real time zone etheric plane where you're in another dimension, mm -hmm. uh, but you're still in the time dimension of this physicality. Yeah, uh, but you're a ghost. You yes. know, uh, a person can't see you. Uh, now, I mean, it's there has been a lot of reports of of people actually seeing people uh, in their etheric bodies um, because um, the etheric energy body is more uh, a lot more dense, dense, uh, mm. dense matter than the astral body, mm. and it'd be very, very hard for somebody to really see somebody in their astral body in front in their room. But the etheric is more dense and is a little, it's a little easier for the physical eye to catch it a little mm -hmm. bit. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, so you're popping into the etheric body, uh, and then you're moving through the etheric plane, or you are uh, shifting your consciousness more into your astral body and entering more into the astral planes. Mm -hmm. um, and the question is, okay, so what do you do, right? Like you're mm -hmm. saying, like you want to use your own intention and your mm -hmm. own consciousness to manifest uh, what you want for yourself mm -hmm. and not mm -hmm. give your soul to another being, to somebody mm -hmm. else who's then going to uh, manipulate, use it in whatever way they want to. Sure. Um, so through consciousness, you have the ability, we have the ability to create our own reality constructs. Now, this is something that uh, the churches will never tell anybody, obviously, mm -hmm. no religious institution, organization, or any, uh, any holy book or anything like that is going to tell you that when you pass away, you can choose to uh, be a creator being. Mm -hmm. And you can uh, create your own uh, worlds, your own astral mm -hmm. worlds, or your own your own matrix in a sense. Mm -hmm. Now, but see, here's here's the catch, though. Um, the catch is that there's a uh, everything's about energy. Mm -hmm. When you especially go into the fourth dimension, if you go into the astral planes, etc., uh, there's a lot of energy that's intertwined in our physicality too, but it's more energetics. So the problem is is that uh, for you, for a uh, person to uh, to uh, manifest a reality construct for a long haul, long haul duration. Uh, the, the, here's the thing: is that you can do it, but then at some point you need to harness energy from others. You see what's going on here? So what we have here is the this this ultimate. A uh, larger reality system truth, which is, um, is which is that all these different heavens, heavenly um, reality constructs, you know, um, that are out there right now. That you have your LDS, you have many different sects of Christianity. I mean, I'm not going to get into the naming stuff. You know, let's just say religious, you know, organizations. So all of these religious organizations. Uh, in my opinion, and from what I've seen in my own out-of-body experiences, is that they essentially have done this. They have made their own heavenly construct in the astral planes on different, different areas of the astral planes, the multiple planes. And then they have to feed energetically uh, to power up these systems and these other matrices. And the same thing in principle, uh, but just through a different dimension, mm. is happening here with our reality construct that we call Earth. And that's one of the reasons that ties into the reincarnational loops, you know, mm. getting people to come back over and over again, giving them guilt trips about not being a perfect soul and mm. having to go back and uh, live a new life, maybe as the, as the person that you victimized in your mm. past life. So you killed somebody, you know, for whatever reason. And then they show you, well, you, you did become a really good soul in person. You helped other people as you got older, but hey, but you still did that. So yeah, yeah. the only way to balance your karma out is, okay, you're going to go back. Here's the deal. You go back, but you're going to be the person that you killed. Mm. 
And you're going to experience the pain and the trauma of that. Mm. And But then the loop just keeps going and going because then you go back, you are the one that gets shot and killed. Yeah. You die, you go to a recovery center and there's these astral recovery centers. There's many different ones uh, yeah. in, the, in different areas of the astrals. Like you were saying earlier, where you do go up into the astrals temporarily yeah. And then and then and then they and then they do a life review and show yeah. something afterwards. Yeah. And then sometimes um, I think people just go directly in, into kind of like a, a nice a nice level in the astrals where they actually just uh, exist in some in, in a very comfortable reality for a little while. But then but then there still comes that point where the spirit guide or the, uh, that certain emotional connection you had with that certain person or the grandmother or whoever it is, comes into your astral reality culture and says, hey, it's time to go in for a life review. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's, so it's happening different ways. It's not like, a, it's not cookie cutter, you know, it's uh, yeah. for everybody. There um, is a reason why this is really important to, uh, <clears throat> to really be aware of as well, because um, from my uh, understanding, this, uh, this system, this false light system is, is starting to break down. It's starting to collapse. And this is why they need to get this agenda in um, very quickly. And the way they're going to, or the way they aim to trap souls in the future is through consciousness transference. So what they're going to do is they're going to sell us the idea that um, technology is going to, uh, the, well, they, they'll, they'll, they'll put in the next sort of few deca decades out there, there'll be cures for cancer via technology on and in the body. Um, and obviously this is going to start to appeal to people. Um, especially the younger generation who are already completely obsessed with technology. They're already wearing stuff on their heads with gaming and stuff like that. So they don't need much work, but um, eventually it's going to get to a point where they'll say, right, Jeremy, unfortunately, you know, you've got terminal cancer, you're going to be in shock and but they'll be going, but you don't have to die. You're physically, you'll have to die. But what we can do for you, Jeremy, Jeremy is <laughs> snake oil. We, we can uh, we can upload your consciousness to this quantum computer over here and you can yeah, upload yeah. it into into anything so you yeah. can live forever and I don't know if you've ever seen uh, the Black Mirror series um, on Netflix I, I highly recommend you watch it and and your viewers watch it just to see where they want to take the world but there was one episode where they had this uh, consciousness upload where this woman died and they put her consciousness into this monkey tele uh, <laughs> monkey teddy teddy bear monkey oh my goodness wow. and all she could do was communicate with like blinking one eye or the oh. other, right? and then oh. they went back they they put this teddy in the museum like two thousand years later she was still stuck in this teddy bear did, 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 like, she, did she know this she, she knew, knew, she, she, knew she was stuck in this teddy bear no no no, no. did she know she was going to be consciousness transferred into the teddy bear yes she she agreed in the in the oh. series she oh, agreed wow. to, she agreed to to have a consciousness transferred on the, at the point of death mm -hmm. but obviously it was all new and they gave her this you know everlasting life uh, so, story. so she didn't know that she'd be a teddy bear um i don't i can't remember whether they told her if she would go into the <laughs> teddy bear. i mean really really it was irrelevant where she was going to be she could have yeah. been in a usb she could have been in a, yeah. a, a like a toy robot or yeah. any, or anything the point was is that her consciousness was trapped there forever and um and and really that's how they're going to seek to do it moving forward in the future so this is why we have an opportunity right now um to realize okay we can get out this is our opportunity to get out before all that uh, technological enslavement comes in and the soul the, the enslavement of our souls via technology that's correct it's really important to get these messages out that's correct and, uh, absolutely because no one wants to think about death or uh, anything like that but we need to have a plan right? we need to yeah. show discernment and um so yeah that's basically absolutely uh, yeah i mean the the hijacking the hij hijacking has been go already been going on i mean you, you you probably know yourself that uh there is a lot of uh black operations and black ops uh there i have seen while out of body especially in the etheric plane um uh, black operations 
So uh, there's there's a lot of money and stuff. I mean, uh, the CIA and the government and other other governments were experimenting and studying astral projection and remote viewing way back, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. And then, and then it went black because they started realizing, whoa, we can manipulate things in this physical reality through the etheric uh, plane or, or astral plane, I guess. But the etheric, again, is that, I mean, again, that's, I think, more of my own opinion of the etheric plane, how it's like a, the it's, it's an overlay, like a, over the real time zone, so that you can actually, you know, uh, spy and, you know, see what your enemy's doing and, you know, plotting and all those kinds of things. <clears throat> uh, but uh, I'm just checking the time, though. Yeah, we've got a couple of minutes left. <laughs> um, so we do have a couple minutes left. Yeah, because remember, guys, uh, Zoom just changed their whole, all their stuff. Uh, so um, we got to keep it to that 30, 40 minute range. Um, we can do another one sometime. Oh, no, for sure. Uh, I think, you know, let's, let's see, let's see those comments, you know, like on this dialogue and this video, uh, you know, see how many of you guys are, you know, um, you know, resonating and, and connecting to what we're talking about. Uh, we want to hear from you uh, most definitely. Uh, but, you know, we're one of the few people, I mean, we can't take all the credit, you can't take all the credit, there's, there, there's other people too with uh, channels on, on, on YouTube and then some other, um, uh, other platforms, uh, but, but there are people talking about this kind of stuff and these topics, and there's a lot of people who do know about this stuff, but they are uh, scared to uh, put their put their face out there and um, put their voice out there and, and and speak how they really feel you know uh, so I think that uh, one day uh, people will look back and, and even at your work Tony and like what you're trying to do and say wow like we need to give this guy some props you know for I, think it, I think it's going to cut out at any moment so maybe we should uh try and wrap it up now oh that's right that's right uh so yeah it's gonna it's gonna cut out uh so anyways hey, tony uh thank you again for making the time to talk to me Welcome. i really appreciate it and indeed uh some future talks uh look definitely will would look forward to that all right okay great thanks a lot for having all me right, all hey. right okay bye-bye